Assalamu alaikum. Hope you are doing fine. We know matter is made of atoms. Atoms have electrons revolving around the, the nucleus, which can be diagrammatically shown in this manner. Suppose I consider this as the nucleus. Electrons are revolving around them in this kind of orbits. These are the electrons. In metals, there are certain electrons which are loosely bound to the nucleus. Such electrons can be removed easily from the atom. We call such electrons as free electrons. These free electrons are responsible for the conduction of electricity. If a substance has large number of such free electrons, then we call them as conductor. Here I have a wire. This is a copper wire. It is a good conductor. If I fix this to an LED, though there are motion of electrons in the conductor even by closing the circuit the LED do not glow the reason is these electrons are randomly moving this random motion of electron do not constitute electric current in a conductor to constitute electric current we need to make these electrons to flow in a particular direction for that we use a cell or a battery this i will explain with the help of a simple activity here i have a transparent tube which is filled with colored water when both the ends are kept at same level the gravitational potential at this point and also at this point are at a same value. So there is no flow of water in that tube. When I slowly raise this end, that means I am increasing the gravitational potential. Now you can observe, I have increased the gravitational potential at this point and here the gravitational potential has reduced. So there is flow of water in the tube. In a similar way, for the electric current to flow in a conductor, we require the ends to be maintained at different potential. We call this as a potential difference. And it is achieved with the help of a cell or battery, as I told you earlier. Now, so, this arrangement do not make this LED bulb to glow. If I connect a cell or battery between these two terminals, what it will do? It will produce a potential difference between these two points. Now I connect this terminal to the positive end of this uh, battery and uh, this is connected to the negative end. You can see the moment I connect with them, the LED glows. It shows that electric current is flowing through this wire through this circuit. It is due to difference in the potential. Here, electrons always flow from a region of lower potential to a region of a higher potential because it carry negative charge. And a positive charge always flow from a region of higher potential to a region of a lower potential. 
Now I will drive an expression for electric current. If I consider Q as the charge flowing through cross sectional area of a conductor for a time t, then current I can be mathematically written as Q upon T. It means the electric current is rate of flow of charge through cross sectional area of a conductor. But here the number of charges flowing through a conductor is not a constant. It may vary with the time. So in such case, instead of taking it as Q, I take this as delta Q. We know we use delta to represent the change. So delta Q is, is the number of charges flowing through a cross-sectional area of a conductor in a time delta T. Then, average current is written as the ratio of delta Q and delta T. Uh, this is the expression for average current flowing in a conductor. What about the the instantaneous current. Instantaneous current means a current flowing in a conductor at any given time. The instantaneous current the instantaneous current current The instantaneous current is given as the limit of average current as a delta t tends to zero. Limit of average current it is nothing but delta q upon a delta t as a delta t tends to zero. So this can be written as dq upon d. So this is a current, electric current flowing in a conductor at any given time. The, uh, the SI unit of electric current is ampere. This unit is ampere, denotable letter A and uh, it is a scalar quantity. Though the current have direction, but it is a scalar quantity. The reason is charge is a scalar quantity and time is also a scalar quantity. The ratio of these two provides us a scalar quantity. Here, charge is measured in coulomb and time is measured in second. So, current will be equal to 1 ampere when 1 coulomb charge flows through a conductor for 1 second. Now I will explain you in what direction the current flow. If I consider this one as a circuit, here I have shown a bulb connected to a cell. In uh, this kind of a circuit, to show the direction of current, we use Eromar. Current always flow from positive terminal of the cell towards the negative terminal. So, such current is called as conventional current and in simple words we call it as current, electric current. You always remember it flows from, it flows from positive terminal towards negative terminal. 
whereas electrons flow in the opposite direction if a current flows in this direction then electrons will flow in the reverse direction because electrons have negative charge they always flow from a region of lower potential to a region of higher potential i hope this video is useful if you have any kind of doubt related to the topic can you put your questions in the comment section thanks for watching